How's it going all? It's Than from Tidal Gardens. We spend a lot of time on this channel talking about corals, so this video will be a bit of a departure. Today, we will be talking about some reef safe starfish that don't often get the spotlight treatment. I have to make the distinction up front that there are certainly some starfish that are very poor inhabitants in our reef tank. Some stars, like chocolate chip starfish, eat all kinds of corals, but they're readily available in just about every pet store. Other types of starfish are filter feeders, such as feather stars and basket stars. While they're not destructive, their feeding requirements are often quite a lot more than most hobbyists can handle. This starfish is a sand sifting star from the genus Astropectin. I came upon these starfish as a decent alternative to sand sifting gobies that kind of had a tendency to jump out of my tank. They don't do quite as good a job of cleaning out the sand bed as the fish did, but there's also no risk of them leaving the aquarium either. I don't spend a ton of time watching these starfish, but they are pretty interesting. They scour the sand bed in search of microfauna and their feet are like little conveyor belts. I have tried other invertebrates that are supposed to stir sand beds, and so far these starfish are my favorite. Horseshoe crabs, for example, stir the heck out of the sand, but they also bulldoze everything in their path, and they can grow to over one foot in length. Sand conchs are a type of snail that dig around in the sand, but as my friend described them, it's like taking a shell and burying it. That's about how much sand they move. While they spend most of their time in the substrate, at least once a day they relocate. Once they decide to get moving, they can really cover some distance. One interesting thing about starfish is their incredible ability to regenerate lost limbs. Here is a starfish from the genus Fromia. We took him in as a rescue having lost all but one arm. Since then, this little guy regrew five arms and is starting to look like... kind of like a little hand. Starfish do not have a centralized brain, but they do have very complex nervous systems. They are able to sense what they touch with their feet, as well as detect light from the tips of their arms. Because they have, in essence, a distributed neural network, starfish cannot plan actions in advance. They respond to stimuli, and the arm that is first to detect something becomes dominant and overrides the other arms. If you have live rock in your tank, there's a decent chance that you have these little guys living in it. These are brittle stars, which are great detritivores, feeding off of uneaten food and waste from other tank mates. They're also fast to reproduce and can achieve sizable populations in a very short amount of time. A close relative to the brittle star are the serpent starfish from the genus Orpheothrix. This guy pictured is massive, probably a good 12 inches across, and is highly active once food is in the water. Now I personally think he's creepy as heck, but at the same time it's really cool to watch him track down pieces of food. Once his arms come in contact with a morsel, it quickly wraps it up like an anaconda and wrestles it into its mouth. I don't have footage of it here, but I've fed some pretty large pieces of fish, practically the size of his oral disc, and it's beyond weird to see his body swell up after swallowing it. There are some types of serpent starfish that are rumored to eat fish, like the green variety. Now I personally have never seen this, but I've heard a lot of anecdotal stories about it happening. I mainly hear that the starfish hangs out in a cave or an underhang and makes a table-like shape with its legs. When fish camp out for the night and rest under it, the starfish will quickly twist down and trap the fish. If you've seen my harlequin shrimp video, you've seen me talk about these guys. They are a nuisance starfish from the genus Asterina. Now most of the time they're merely unsightly, as they tend to reproduce very quickly and obstruct your view. Sometimes, however, there are a particular species that eats coral. It's hard to tell which is which because they all look so similar, but I've seen a couple varieties that eat LPS like Acanthastria and SPS like Pasilopora. Lastly, I'll show off possibly my favorite starfish, the blue Linkia. These starfish are completely reef safe and consume bacterial film in the aquarium. They don't do much in the way of movement or activity, but as you can see, they have incredible coloration. This starfish, like many others, is very sensitive to changes in water, particularly salinity and pH. It is for this reason that if you do buy any starfish, take your time acclimating it to your tank. We tend to acclimate things pretty quickly here, but when it comes to starfish, it pays off to take your time and drip acclimate them over the course of 45 minutes to an hour to minimize the stress. 
Okay, that about does it for reef safe starfish. I hope you liked the video. Until next time, happy reefing.